Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm out in the river because I'm doing a bit of stick float fishing, hopefully for some big chub and maybe a barbel if I'm lucky. Um, so I've picked my swim, I've seen a few chub working their way up and down the reeds on the far bank and down towards a tree that's just downstream um, and the only bait I bought with me today is a pint of maggots I'm going to be flicking little balls of maggots in maybe 10, 15, 20 maggots at a time just to try and get these chub feeding um, up in the water and then I've got a really nice stick float set up that I'm using today to hopefully get a few of those fish out. I have a keep net that I've placed in the edge because I'm only going to be fishing for a few hours um, so any of the nice chub that I catch I'll be putting to one side in the keep net to be able to get a really nice picture at the end of the session. Um, any barbel I catch obviously won't go in a keep net, you shouldn't really do that. Um, they'll get rested and put straight back. So without further ado, let's crack on. Uh, I'll go through the rig in a minute and then we'll get some fishing done. I've been flicking some maggots out there. I've seen a couple of chub taken, so I think we're going to be in for a nice little evening session. This is the setup I'm using. It's really, really nice. It's the Shakespeare 11 foot Super Team float rod pitched up with the Mitchell Match RZT in size 4000 loaded with six pound line straight through. It's a really, really nice rod for this kind of fishing. I have done a little bit already, um, not today though. Um, the rig's a really nice one, just sort of a medium size uh, stick float there. It's two gram, so it's perfect fishing this water here. It's about three foot deep on the far bank. Um, like I say, six pound line straight through. And then we've got um, a BB sharp, and then I've got a, a section of number four shops that just go right down to the hook, which is a size 12 barbed hook on there. It's basically a carp hook, nice and strong. I'm going to be running a bunch of maggots down that far bank. Fingers crossed we'll start picking up some chub. Right, let's crack on. Now it's a bit dirty, but I'm actually going to put some of these maggots, they're a bit disgusting, they're a bit old, in my little pouch, which is uh, on the front of my waders. So it's all right, the pouch already stinks as it is. So just put a nice fistful of maggots in there, <laughs> a couple. Just so it's easy to feed the swib. There we go. Wash my hands in the water, just can get some free food, the minnows can. I'll put a maggot tub to one side. Just put a cluster of maggots on there. We're after chub, so we don't need to be too careful about how many maggots we've got on there. You could put probably 10 maggots on there and they'd still take it. So. What I'm doing is grabbing some maggots out of my pouch. Probably maybe 10 or 20 at a time. <clears throat> just chucking them over to the far bank. Just trying to get these fish feeding confidently on these baits. And then we'll run our bait down there. I'm fishing about as deep as it is out there, so I'm fishing about three foot deep. So I want my bait running right near the bottom. So I think that's where these fish are going to be feeding, just picking baits out from the gravel on the bottom as well as picking some on the drop. Oh, Mr. Fisher. Slow reactions. <laughs> Look at the snag down there. As soon as it gets to a certain part of the swim, the float pulls under in the same spot every point. I don't think it's a fish. I think there's a bit of a snag down there. That's not really helpful, is it? Right, we'll shallow up our rig a little bit. I was wanting it to run sort of along the bottom, but uh, there's a bit of a snag down there, so we'll shorten it up by maybe half a foot. We'll go down there again, put some more bait out. That's the key, just to keep things feeding, keep that bait going in. Keep flicking it over to that far bank and let it run right down the reeds, right down the swim. No, it's higher in the water, I shouldn't get as many false bites from the, uh, the snags that are down there. There we go, we're in. We're into a fish, there we go. Just moved up into the water, off the bottom, and we're into a fish. That feels like a nice chub. 
loose, tighten that drag up just a little bit. Yeah, it looks like a nice chop. It's a good size one too, actually. Got some weed on his head, which is helping me out. There we go. Fish number one is in the net. And he's not a bad one either. Really long fish, but so hollow. Probably a fish of maybe scraping four pound. Something like that. Let's take a quick look at him now. We'll take a better look at him at the end. We'll put this fish in the keep net. And we'll see how many more we can catch. It's wicked. The trick is not to feed too much. Because if you feed too heavily, and all your bait starts going straight to the bottom, then the fish will get preoccupied on the bottom. And they'll not move up for your bait or move as it, be as confident taking your bait as it's moving down the swim. They'll get preoccupied just feeding right on the deck. Another fish, we've got another one. I was really skeptical then, it was a weird bite and it was such a long distance, it was right at the end of the swim. This is a strong one too. Oh man, the reel's peeling drag. This might be one of the really, really, really big chub that I was after today. I bought my scales with me specifically for if I was to catch one of the really nice fish that hang around here. And this could be it. Like I say, I'm fishing up in the water, I'm fishing about a foot off the bottom after finding a couple of snags on the deck. I think it might have got me done in a snag. So now normally I would wade out to the snag and get the fish out, but I don't really want to spook the swim. This could be one of the really big chub that I've been after. Gotta try and keep the rod low if you think they're snagged up. See, this one might be, unless it's a barbel. Could potentially be a barbel, it's either a barbel or a massive chub. I really hope it's the latter. <laughs> Always a barbel, I can see it. Uh, on the stick float. Second fish. He's not a big barbel, but he's definitely putting up a good scrap on this float setup. Like I say, we're not putting any barbel in the keep net today. Or any day. We never put barbel in the keep net. Nobody should. Not built for it. Chub are all right. Fat, lazy things. They're a bit like carp of the rivers, aren't they, Chub? They tend to be all right for a couple hours in a keep net. If you fancy catching a few, but barbel now. But look at the way he's pulling that rod around. He's going right underneath the reeds. I've been feeding up here and letting the, the maggots drift right down. Caught him downstream and he's come right the way up here. Here we go. We've got him, we've got him, we've got him. Beautiful fish. There we go. Beautiful river barbel, caught on the stick float. <laughs> Epic stuff. There we go. Hook is just caught right in his big old rubberies. Right at the front of the mouth. I've started using barbed hooks more and I seem to be pinning a lot more fish. There we go, that ball of maggots. Let's take a look at him in a second. We'll give him a little rest first. I always rest my, my barbel, well, most fish. I'll rest first, then I'll show him to the main camera. Then they get rested again and then release. So they've got plenty of rest time in the water. They're not spending too long out. So I'll let him rest there next to the keep net. And then we'll take a better look at him. It is a beautiful, beautiful river barbel. Beautiful bar of gold. Caught trotting maggots down the swim. Probably about a half a foot off the bottom where he was. So he rose up off the bottom and took that bait. That's awesome. Not quite the chub that I was after today but I'll take it any day. This won't be going in the keep net. We'll release him now and uh, get on with that chub fishing, see if we can catch any more. Awesome. All right, I've had him resting in this edge for a little while now. With loads and loads of fry down there. It's nice to see. Just get down on my knees to release him. But he's very lively. These barbel have got to be rested for a good amount of time before you let them go. Oh, there we go. And he's bolted off upstream. He was ready and ready. A couple of fresh-ish maggots on fresh as I can get out of this bad batch of maggots I've got. <laughs> Make this a little bit deeper. 
I think I might have seen, I haven't got a polarised glasses today, but I think I might have seen a perch or two as well down there. Be a nice fish to catch. As well as a chub and barb, we'll make it a bit of a multi-species session today. Oh, we've got a fish, we've got a fish. We swam right upstream. Is that the per Oh, it's a small chub. I'll take it. Thought it might have been a perch that I'd seen. You got me snagged up. So the bigger fish that I've caught today haven't really got me snagged up. But a small one pound chub or less than a pound chub managed to. There we go. Good chip. That had me swim. You little bugger. You could have potentially ruined my fishing now. Let's get him on hooked, put him in the net, there we go. Bunch of maggots, right on the front of his big old lips. Here we go, probably about a pound. Dropped him in the net there. Bunches of maggots out at the far bank, keeping it trickling in and working my way down the reeds. Constantly mending the line, mending my float, moving out of the way of the surface weed that's coming down. There we go, and I missed it. <laughs> Just talking to you guys. Oh, and again, might be small fish. Yeah, constantly mending the line. There's a lot of wind today. A lot of debris coming down in the river. Lots of weeds, lots of sticks, branches and things. So I'm constantly mending it. Re we, uh, retouching the rig when it's in the water. Getting it to run. There we go, there's a fish. <laughs> run nice and smoothly. A float just went out of sight, just beyond where I could see it, where there's some branches hanging over into the water. And I uh, started to reel and there's a fish on the end. So, very good sign. And that's another, I think that's another barbel. <laughs> Pretty sure that's another barbel. If not, it might be a nice chub actually. The barbel normally goes straight for the far bank, whereas this is coming straight up the middle channel. Oh no, it's another chub. <laughs> that's what I'm after though. Oh, it's a nice one. Might be bigger than that first one I caught. Oh, he's a scrapper one. Definitely fighting hard. He's going right under the reeds under my near side edge. He's trying to get me snagged up. You can't do it. I'm gonna have you. You're mine. There we go, that's chub number three. And another really, really nice specimen. There we are, another beautiful fish. Probably about three and a half pound, three pounds, something like that. Really, really nice fish. Into the keep net and uh, see if we can find many more. I'll just scoot him in there. Good enough with the other two chub I've got. The only positive thing about using these crappy old maggots is <laughs> they stink. <laughs> you know, fish, especially chub, love smelly baits, love smelly cheese and things. Those so smelly maggots will be just as tempting to them as nice fresh ones. Oh, a load of ducks coming now. Can avoid them. <laughs> Don't want to play hook a duck. Not today. Not any day. Oh, definitely got to be small chub giving me these false bites because that rig right now is really, really shallow. It's only about a foot and a half deep. So it's definitely a fish that took the bait then. Only a small one, I'm assuming. Let's let it drift really nicely downstream. There we go. <laughs> and another fish straight away. <laughs> Feels like a, a nice chub. Feels like a really nice one, this one. Doesn't feel like a barbel. It's not bolting around. It's just got big plodding head shakes. 
Although he is going straight for the far bank under the roots, which is definitely a classic barbell move. But he's got really slow, dumpy head shakes. Which tells me that's probably going to be a chub. But I was wrong about the last one, weren't I? I thought the last one was a barbell and it ended up being a chub. So <laughs> we'll see what this one turns into. Yeah, it looks like a chub to me and it's a good size one as well. He's got some weed on his head at the minute, which is playing into my favour. This rod's really nice. It's soft enough so if you get a small fish, you don't bump them off. You can still play them quite nicely. But if you get a bigger fish, it's got enough power behind it to be able to pull them in up this current. It's a really nice trotting setup. Thankfully, he's got a lot of weed on his head, which makes my life easier because he's stopped fighting so much. There we go, and he's one of the good sized chub from around here, I think. Yeah, he's a really nice size fish. This fish could potentially be a four and three quarters, maybe a five pounder. Look at that. Oh, put me shutting off, I'll have to re-put that on. Nicely hooked, like he ain't coming off. There we go, there we go out of the way, covered in weed. There we have it. Beautiful, beautiful chub. Real nice size, probably four and three quarter pound, something like that. Probably a four pound, 13 ounce, 12 ounce. Really nice fish. Let's get him in that keep net and uh, get some more casts out there because it seems like some fish feeding. <laughs> there we go, buddy. and they're taking baits as they're swimming down. You'll get a lot more confident takes as the bait's flowing down the water. And picking up those fish. Not only chub, but barbel as well, rising up to take these baits. And there's another one. <laughs> That's either a big chub or a small barbel. Either way, he's already got me in the snags. <laughs> Jump right underneath some reeds. <laughs> Putting this rod to the test, beating these fish out from the snags. Come on. Oh no! Actually, he might be a chub with loads of weed on his head because it straight away went into a snag and now I'm pulling a massive clump of weed. So I think that's what it might have been. Really getting confused with these fish today. Normally I can tell straight away there's definitely a fish on the end though. I think. He threw me off, I saw the big clump of weed coming in and I thought I didn't have a fish on but he was right underneath it. Oh, there we go. And we got another really nice chub. That's a real, real, real nice one. I think that one might be five pound but look at that weed he got caught on the line. Probably about another four pound of weed. That's why he felt so heavy and why I thought I had a barbel. Once again, those maggots right on that top lip. Every time. There we go. Put that rig out nicely. There we go. Real, real nice fish. I thought he was bigger than he is. Covered in little black speckles. It's really nice. Um, it's probably about four and three quarters again four and a half something like that yeah maybe four and a half but really really beautiful fish let's get him in the net some really really nice fish now building up and down there this is the key just keep that feed going in
Yes, 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 yes. Oh, it's been easily an hour <laughs> since uh, I've had some action, well, proper action. I've had a couple of perch, sort of small perch after the flurry of chub and that nice barbel I caught. And I've been, oh, that feels like a barbel. I've been uh, trotting my bait down the swim oh, hundreds of times, nothing. I recently changed, well, altered my rig. So I made it over depth. I made it about three foot deep, so it's scraping along the bottom. And I started putting big handfuls of maggots in to get whatever fish are out there feeding on the bottom. Because I think I definitely spooked the swim and whatever was down there, meaning that the fish were no longer confident feeding up in the water. So I had to make sure to try and get the noses down onto the gravel, stop trying to get them to come and feed up in the water and just run my bait along the deck and it's resulted in another fish. And I'm pretty sure, unless this is a massive, massive PV chub, um, this has got to be a barbel. Like I say, I adjusted my rig so it's running along the bottom. And I think that's what it is. I even packed the big camera away. I didn't think I'd be using it again until I was ending the session. <laughs> but it turns out I'm gonna have to turn it back on again in a minute. Yep, and it's another barbel. <laughs> It's so that three or four chub, three nice chub, two small perch and two barbel on the stick float. And I've been fishing maybe under three hours anyway, probably about two and a half hours. So I think after this fish, we'll probably pack up and check out what we've got in the net. Once again, it's not a huge barbel. Definitely welcome though. On the stick float gear. Six pound line straight through. Really not a crazy rig at all. And I'm wading, so I'll walk out to him, seeing as though I'm packing up soon. There we go. Oh, big bunch of weed on it as well. Beautiful fish. And what we'll do is, seeing as though this is going to be my last fish of the session, <clears throat> I'm going to leave this fish to rest in the net after I've unhooked him. We'll unhook him now. There we go. Nice big bunch of maggots right in the front of his mouth there. Oh, let's get that out. There we go. What we'll do is, we'll leave him to rest in the net. I'm going to uh, take the keep net out of the water, get it on the bank uh, with the camera pointing on it, and then we'll take this barbel out and put it with the other fish just to show them to you guys at the end, show them a net of fish. Holy, better than I thought. Release this barbel. Very last one I caught just a few minutes ago. He was resting in the keep net. Really, really powerful fish. He's been fighting like crazy in that net, so. He's about ready to bolt off in a minute. It's always good just to make sure. But all his fins are perked up, side fins, dorsal fin. Really good sign, and there we go. Oh, he's bolted off right upstream. Now, I've had that much action today. <laughs> My big camera's died. So I've not bothered getting the net out on the bank. I've already let the barbel go, as you've seen, um, and we're gonna take a look at the biggest chub and then we'll let the rest of the fish go. But I've caught a total of four chub, um, of the larger chub anyway. Smallest one being around three pound. The largest one, I've just weighed it, uh, and it came in at just under five pound. It was something like four pound 13, I think it was. Um, so very, very close to that five pound mark. Um, and absolutely awesome fun, all on that stick float setup today. Uh, so we'll take a look at that big chub now. I've also had a couple of small perch, but they've already been let go. <laughs> Didn't want to get them uh, crushed by these big fat chub anyway. There we go. I'm in the water right now with these fish. And there we have it. Biggest chub of the day, just under five pound. An absolutely beautiful fish. Not a mark on it. Pretty much like all the fish I've caught today. Not a mark on them. So I've ended the session. Two barbel, four big chub, a small chub and a couple of perch, all within two and a half hours worth of fishing. Absolutely awesome.
Let's get them back. They're all very lively. They're all been uh, fired up in the net, ready to go. Let's get these fish put back and we'll get off, set off home. So as always, thank you guys for watching. I've really enjoyed this session. Caught some absolutely cracking fish. Um, like I say, it's like four or five chub, four of those were good sized ones. Two barbel and those perch. Did a really good two and a half hours, because that's all I fished for. I was supposed to fish for four hours, um, but after catching that last barbel, I figured I'd exhausted the swim. I didn't think there was probably gonna be many more fish down there. And I've really, really thoroughly enjoyed myself on that float gear absolutely cracking session so thank you guys for watching if you want to check out the tackle that i've used the rod the reel i'll leave that in the description below and if you want to check out my instagram and facebook i'll whack that down there as well thank you guys for watching and i'll catch you guys next time